Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Sierra. For today's video, since today is game day for the students, that's the fun for the students' gear, including pants. Um, I figured we should do a cake, and this is going to be a two-tiered cake, and I'm going to show you guys what we need to, the, to do this, but before I do, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up, and don't forget the subscribe button down below. Now let's get on with baking. The things you will need will be one teaspoon of vanilla, four egg whites, a mixture of one teaspoon baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda, a half cup of butter, one and a third cup of buttermilk, two cups sugar, two and a half cups gluten-free flour, a large mixing bowl, a nine inch springform pan, and a six inch little pan. I've gone ahead and mixed my dry ingredients together but now it is time to add my wet ingredients. I'm just going to be adding my butter first, and I did microwave the butter for about 15 seconds. If yours is straight from the refrigerator, then that will be what you want to do. Um, and if it is already out, then you won't need to do that step at all. I'm just going to take my one and a third and pour it in. And you're going to want to use electric beaters. Um, I don't have a stand-up mixer. If I did, I would be doing that, but since I don't have a stand-up mixer, then this is what I am. Doing. Now I'm just going to take my electric mixer and just beat it on low until everything is well combined. Okay, so now all of our ingredients are mixed together. I'm just going to be going ahead and taking some olive oil spray and spraying our two pans. Now, this being a spring form pan, that does mean that the bottom does come out, so you want to make sure that yours does not have any leaks. I've already done that. Mine don't have leaks, and so I'm just going to head and continue with spraying them. Okay, so now that those have been sprayed and um, will not stick to the pan, I'm just going to go ahead and take my batter. Now, this will be totally dependent on what kind of pan you are using and what size but I'm just going to be taking a spatula and scooping out most of the batter into the larger pan and I'm going to be putting some of the smaller batter or the a smaller section of batter into my smaller pan. So now that the batter is in our cake pans, I'm going to put our pans into the oven at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. So instead of making my own icing, I am still making it, but it is a prepackaged form of a powder and this one is the Wilton buttercream icing mix. Found it and I figured I would try it. Now this requires six tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of milk or water and you just simply mix it together. For that I will be using a whisk instead of my electric beater because I really just don't want to wash the beaters right now so that's why I'm doing that. So now I have made my um, icing. I have added one extra tablespoon of water just because it seemed too thick, so I added some more and it worked really, really well. If you are going to be doing it the same way I did, I would suggest you put your butter into the microwave or any other way of heating up your butter and make sure it melts down a little bit more because I had a little bit of trouble with that and so that's why I ended up having to do. So I have been using fondant, and so this is the fondant that I am using, and it is the Fondorific Buttercream Fondant. It is totally gluten-free, and the frosting that I am using is gluten-free as well, but this one is, I found it to work really, really well. It rolls out really nicely, as you guys can tell. And once the cakes are out and done cooling, then we're going to spread that on top of the top cake but we're going to be using uh, part of it so I can make these little diamond shaped uh, logos, as you guys can see, maybe, maybe not, uh, of these sealers uh, gear. So as you guys can see, it's already been rolled out. I'm just going to go ahead and take a knife and you're going to just cut off a section that you think will be plenty enough for doing your little diamonds. The colors I'm going to be using are the blue, the yellow, and the red, and these are all from a Wilton gel uh, food coloring kit and you're just going to head, go ahead and cut it off and section it into the three different balls that you will need of your fondant and go ahead and color them. So 
So our little cake is out of the oven and I had to do it for about 35 minutes. The bigger cake is still in there and I, I gave it about two more minutes so that one should be done. Um, now I'm just going, going to dump these out onto our wired racks so they can completely cool. going to be taking the fondant that we have already colored and you're just going to go ahead and knead it out into kind of a flat surface and go ahead and do little diamonds of each color. I am by no means a professional and I'm honestly just trying this so it probably won't turn out perfect but this is the way we're doing it. Expect your hands to be uh, totally colored and not natural looking at all but this is what we're going to do and I hope you guys will try this too. So our big cake is now done and that cooked for about 50 minutes. It took a long time for it to cook, but it's finally done and it is now cooling on a wire rack. And our nice diamonds are all done, uh, done by my mom actually because I had a really hard time doing them. So thanks mom. I'm going to be putting the Steelers part on it because it already looks like the Steelers and the base of it is going to be pretty unique. So for the base layer, I'm going to be dyeing it green, at least the frosting. I have put out a little section of frosting here. That will be our lines because we are going to make the field on the bottom. On top it will say the logo uh, or the name of your whatever team that you're doing. I am doing the Steelers. And so I decided to pull out a little bit to do the lines and the numbers for the yardages. And then the rest of it in the bowl is going to be dyed this color green. It's kind of like a grass green, I would say. Uh, but that's the color we're hoping for, and I'm just going to go ahead, go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that our bottom cake is mostly cool, I am going to go ahead and take our green frosting and just go ahead and frost it and make sure that you cover it really, really well. So I've already frosted my cake and added the fondant on the top. I um, am now going to just go ahead and do the lines of the um, yardage. And with this, I'm not using a traditional bag. I'm actually using a sandwich bag. And I've just cut a little tiny hole at the um, tip. And I've moved all of my frosting down to the end. And I'm just going to go ahead and put on the lines and the numbers. Okay, so now that that is all done, as you guys can see with the numbers and the lines, I'm just going to now add our decoration of the logo on top, and I'm just going to do it in the order that it is, and hopefully it will turn out all right. So now that we are all done with our cake, this is what it looks like, and it is a all-white, um flavored cake with a Steelers logo on top. Uh, it was a challenge to make, I have to say, and but uh, I'm very glad I did it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up and don't forget to click the, the subscribe button down below. I will be having this um, cake. I will take a lot of pictures of it and post it on Instagram. So if you guys go follow me there, uh, that'd be great. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.